military officials now tell ABC News that it was a rocket-propelled grenade that brought down a U.S. helicopter in a remote area of Afghanistan. At this point, their fate is unknown. We live in Washington Depot, Connecticut. We moved here in 1980. It's very much a 19th century town. We're an independent little town of, as I say, about 3,500 people officially. Stephen was a lefty from the earliest days, so he started Little League that next summer after we moved here. I remember the Reich family moving to town. Back in those days, we used to play, it was 8 to 12, was Little League. You know, the better ones, they played with the older kids, and, and I think they, they pitched a couple innings, and they, they moved them right up to the older group. He's one of those kids who says, if I'm going to play, I'd like to have the ball. So <laughs> he, he got the ball. Just right after his 16th birthday, he was called upon to pitch the state championship game for his high school team. Chippewa Valley High School looking for their third Class S state championship. The crowd starting to gather right along the railing. This is a tough out. He didn't back down from a challenge. He, he, he welcomed a challenge, and he was at his best in those kind of games. Gumbo third, Trowbridge. Third to Christian. They got him. They did it. Steve Reich, the MVP. It, it's such a big occasion when you make it to the state finals. There's signs all over the place, and we have a bunch of banners around here uh, commemorating the fact that we won. Sometime during his sophomore year, he went to um, West Point. He came home from that visit, and he was just so psyched. He saw people at West Point who were determined to become officers, and that's why you go to West Point. You always hear West Point is supposedly you know, the best of the best go, and so it almost became sort of a challenge to see if, see if I could do it, see if I could hack it. When he came here as a freshman, I, I knew that he was a special young man. I knew that he had special talents, special gifts on the baseball field, but also off the baseball field. Number 20, Steve Steven's impact on the baseball team was immediate. He was our ace from the time he stepped onto the grounds at West Point. I admired the type of leader he was, the dynamic personality that drew people to him. But most of all, I loved his competitiveness. I loved his spirit. I loved the fire in his eyes. And I loved the fact that every time he was on the mound, we were going to have a great chance to be very successful that day. He set several school records in a single game, career, season record. What stands out the most to me is when the stakes were the highest, Stephen performed the best. After Stephen's sophomore year, he had a decision to make. Once a cadet enters classes their junior year, they then will have service time owed to the country for their time at West Point. Stephen certainly had options. I'm sure there were people talking in his ear that, hey, if you left, you could go into the professional ranks. You might be on a fast track to the major leagues. Two years ago, after your sophomore year, you, you made a decision whether or not to stay at the academy or try to give pro ball a shot. We just went over all the options and we figured out that, you know, my best deal was to stay at West Point and, and uh, see this through, get my education and, uh, and then go on from there. I think he knew that he could achieve at a very high level on the baseball field, but he also felt the desire for much, much more than that. Our cadets are here for a higher mission, and I think Stephen embodied that. On this Memorial Day weekend, we all pray that we have sent America's sons and daughters to war for the last time. But common sense reminds us to be prepared. When Stephen went to West Point, we were at a time of peace. Once they make that commitment, they belong to Uncle Sam. And if there is war, then they'll definitely go. Good luck, God bless you, and God bless America. So Stephen had a tremendous opportunity following graduation to participate for Team USA. It was recognized that Stephen was the best of the best, and he belonged on that stage. 
Team USA was going to play in the World University Games in Buffalo, New York. We had seats at the opening, but they were way, way up at the top. And Team USA, of course, came last, and Stephen carried the flag. And I had to beg my way down to the field to get a picture of Stephen. I was able to get right down at field level, right at the railing. And he marched a little past, and then he turned and he saw me. And, you know, it was great. The picture that, I'm sorry, the picture that I took is kind of one of those hi mom moments, you know. Turned out that there was a there was a possibility that the Army would, would let me out early of my commitment so I can go play ball. A couple of scouts uh, watched me throw and the guy for the Orioles just happened to like enough what he what he saw and and he ended up signing me and here I am. He was a very, very impressive young man. And in scouting and in sports in general, we often hear the cliche about the it factor. And when you saw Stephen Reich pitch, you knew that he had it. It's almost every kid's dream to play in the big leagues. I mean, that's what you grow up uh, dreaming of doing and how many people get a chance to really live out their dreams. I'm doing it right now and having a great time doing it. You know, hopefully I'll, this, this little dream of mine will come true. He pitched two games in the California League and someone, I believe, in the Pentagon uh, realized that they had invested X number of dollars in his education to learn to fly helicopters, and they informed him that he was being called back to duty in the United States military. Not being able to pursue a career with the Orioles was a heartbreak for Stephen, but as soon as that decision was made, he closed that door and he moved on. Previously on A Soldier Story. Small town baseball star Stephen Reich ended his career at West Point as the winningest pitcher in Army history. When the military opened the door for Stephen to pursue his dream of playing professionally, he was signed by the Baltimore Orioles. But after just two starts in the minor leagues, Stephen was called back to active duty. Stephen said, what should I do next? And his commander said, you need to think about special operations. You need to think about the 160th. Once he saw the 160th, he saw a higher level, and he just jumped at it. The 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment uh, provides precision helicopter support to our nation's elite special operators, Army Rangers, Green Berets, Special Forces, and Navy SEALs. You want somebody who's going to be in control. You want somebody who's confident. You want somebody who's not afraid to fail. I think those qualities that, that made him such a good pitcher probably helped to make him such a good pilot. Steve was a natural leader. He was a natural pilot, a stick and rudder kind of guy. We like to say he could fly the airplane gracefully. We first deployed in September of 2001. Steve was the battle captain, ran the missions uh, that we were conducting from Uzbekistan into Afghanistan in the early days of the war. Steve was very instrumental in, in controlling and leading those missions. Let's go, guys! Everybody, let's move! Let's really move! As portrayed in the film, uh, Lone Survivor Operation Red Rings, we were in Afghanistan providing support to Special Forces and Navy SEALs as they went throughout Afghanistan conducting missions to find and destroy the Taliban. The SEALs went in on a reconnaissance mission came into to heavy contact and needed to be extracted. With Stephen, uh, gathered up his crew, flew out of Bagram into Afghanistan as, as the situation was developing. Stephen really only knew one thing that day, and that's the only one thing that he needed to know. He was going to the sound of the gunshot, uh, and there were American lives. And, and Steve lived by a creed uh, of never quit, never surrender, and never leave a fallen comrade. I was cleaning the house and I stopped to take a break. 
and I turned on the television set. Good morning, everyone. Military officials now tell ABC News that it was a rocket-propelled grenade that brought down a U.S. helicopter in a remote area of Afghanistan. The Chinook was carrying 17 service members, including a team of Navy SEALs. At this point, their fate is unknown. In my heart, I knew that it was my son. We knew the helicopter was down, we knew lives were lost, but, and we knew we didn't get a call. And we were just one of the many, many families waiting. I was um, talking to my sister on the phone, and a car pulled up. A army captain in a green uniform got out of the car. Came down the driveway. I knew then. Steve Reich and, and his memory and, and what he lived for uh, really espouses the, the values in, in that last paragraph of our creed. I serve with the memory and pride of those who've gone before me, for they loved to fight, fought to win, would rather die than quit. Night stalkers don't quit. You always ask somebody, you know, what, what do you want to do with your life? What do you want to do here? What do you want to do there? And a lot of times somebody will, will, will give you an answer, oh, I want to be a CEO, I want to be a president, I just want to be Joe Schmo or whatever. But if there's one thing that I'm scared of, I'm scared to death of, of uh, you know, looking back on everything and saying to myself, God, I, I should have done this, I should have, I should have taken that extra step and, 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 and made that effort to, and, and taken that chance. And I don't want to have anything missing in my life before, when I, you know, when, I, when it's all over.